What's up guys, Ian Sandusky back here again from Let's Machine, here on Practical Machinist for Shop Talk. Before we get started today, make sure you like and subscribe below if you want to see more videos. Today we're going to be doing a quick intro on end mills and cutters and when to use which. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today is going to be a really quick intro, just a quick crash course on different kinds of cutters and end mills and when to use them. Um, for those of you who have been in the trade for a long time, this is probably going to be some pretty basic information, but especially for you guys who are just getting into the trade, hopefully this is useful. So when we're selecting cutters for a job, and this applies both to conventional and CNC machining, or I guess I should say manual machining and CNC machining, there are a few different considerations you should take into consideration when selecting an end mill. The first thing you always want to use as a general rule is you want to use the largest diameter and shortest cutter you can for the job. The reason for this is twofold. One, cycle time or machining time on a, on a, on a manual mill. The larger cutter you can use, the faster you can remove material, um, you know, the faster you can surface something, the faster you can face something off. Um, if you're doing something this big with a quarter inch end mill, it's not gonna be an efficient use of time. You wanna use something larger. The second reason you wanna use a shortest cutter you can for the job is deflection. The longer cutter you have in a program, the more deflection, vibration, and chatter you're gonna to have to deal with. You can always get around this by knowing what you're doing and adjusting your feeds and speeds and depth of cuts and all that. But as a general rule, the shorter the cutter, the less chatter and vibration you're gonna have. So right off the bat, your first option, large and short, is a cutter like this. This is an insertable end mill. This is, uh, I believe, inch and a, uh, two inch. This is a two inch insertable end mill. You can see it's got five different inserts there. This in a CNC cutter or a CNC machine is about as short as you could possibly get. You can see that the distance from the spindle to the actual tip of the cutter is very, very short. This is gonna have very little deflection it's gonna have very little vibration, and I can make big cuts at a time, you know? Theoretically, I can make cuts as long as the inserts are. Obviously, you can't go deeper than that. This is something you'd use typically for uh, facing operations, you know, for facing off the top of a part, uh, flattening things out. If you can use something like this, this should always be, as a general rule, your first go-to. You're gonna have very little deflection, you're gonna be able to rip material really quickly. On the flip side to that would be something like this. I don't want to use something small unless I have to use something small for that job. Um, you know, if I have to get inside somewhere or if I'm milling little features, um, if I have to hit a radius that's, you know, max this size or larger or small or larger, I guess. You don't want to use little cutters unless you have to. More risk of tool breakage, uh, slower speeds and feeds and so on. The next size down would be something like this, and then we get into solid end mills. So first rule, always use the largest diameter you can for the job and as short as you can. The next consideration is what kind of material you are cutting. For, as a general rule, the harder material you're milling, the more flutes your cutter should have. Um, it's gonna basically reduce your chip load, and so on and so forth, we won't get into it. But as a general rule, more flutes, harder material, less flutes, softer material. As a note guys, I'm a pretty basic general purpose machinist. I don't really deal with any kind of ink canal or molybdenum or any really hard stuff. I don't even really mill hardened material that much because if I'm gonna have a part that's hard, typically we do all our machining beforehand, send it out for hardening, and then EDM wire cut it if we have to or grind it. Um, so this is very basic. If it's something like aluminum, that's when I'll use something like this, obviously in a shorter form. This is a three flute high helix end mill. This is a YG cutter. Um, it has a high polish. The reason you wanna use something with a lower flute count and a higher helix is that you're gonna be able to take a bigger chip per cut. Um, soft material, you really wanna get good chip evacuation to get it out of the cut. With a high helix like this and a low flute count, you know, a three, a three flute, um, you're gonna be able to kick the chip out faster. 
For something like steel, I personally use something like this. This is a four flute end mill. It's got a coating on it. You can see that the flutes are much shallower. They don't have that super high helix or deep cut. It's for basically taking a smaller chip, but taking more cuts per rev, if that makes sense. Um, this is something you'll kind of figure out as you go along with your mentors and through your apprenticeship, but this is something you can use as a general purpose tool for anything. You can use this for aluminum. You can use this for steel. You can use this for brass. Um, your most efficient use of it is going to be in harder materials. Something like this is going to be more efficient in softer materials. When you get into things that are really soft, like plastics or uh, UHMW, you can get into cutters like this. This is a two flute high speed seal end mill. You can see when you look at it, it's got really, really big flutes on it. And you can take a really big cut um, in terms of your depth of cut and really get good chip evacuation in there. I don't have any on hand, but you can actually get cutters that are single flute. So instead of having this whole second flute in there, it's just one flute. And those are really, really good for woodworking. They're really good for plastics. Uh, really good for um, plexiglass and lexan like applications. I don't really do much of it. So plastics, you know, we either use a three flute or a two flute like this. The other consideration when you're choosing a um, end mill to use when you're doing a hard versus soft application is what that cutter is made out of. Most cutters for steel today, um, you know, in modern times is, are going to be cemented carbide. Um, you know, cutters like this and that four fluid I showed you earlier, they are cemented carbide. They're very, very hard, very rigid. Um, you get good, uh, solid, you know, not a lot of, um, what am I trying to say, reverberation out of them. They're very, very good for milling hard material because they're harder than the material. They don't really dull out very fast. You know, they'll chip, they'll break, but they can take a lot more abuse than something like a high speed seal cutter. High speed seal cutters are, they have their application. I use them for, they're cheaper. The big th big difference is that they're cheaper. If this cutter costs $65, this cutter may be 30. Um, high speed seal cutters are what everything used to be made out of before uh, cemented carbide used to exist. They're dated, um, you know, they have their applications, but even in milling softer materials like aluminum, they will dull out much faster than something like a cemented carbide, um, especially because a lot of them are not coated. You can get them coated, but as a general rule, you know, the ones you're gonna find on the shelf are generally not coated unless you ask for it. Um, they have their place, I keep them in stock. I can't tell you the last time I ordered any because I typically use carbide for everything these days because the price points are so low. Um, for instance, if I'm doing something like a plastic, I have one of these on the shelf, I might use it, but with a modern uh, carbide high helix cutter, especially one with this kind of high polish finish on it, I can get similar or better performance out of this cutter than my old school high speed steel. They have their applications. Some people still swear by them. Personally, I tend to stick to carbide. Um, it's kind of the way it is. So again, you know, you have a lot of options when it comes to tooling, whether you're ordering it yourself or you, you know, have your shop box. You never want to use a cutter like this when a cutter like this will do. These are the same diameter, same number of flutes. Um, this cutter, if you only have a cut that's this deep and is only cutting on the top quarter inch, is going to perform a lot better than using this cutter cutting on the top inch, uh, top quarter inch. Um, another reason is if I'm only burning out the top quarter inch, I can replace this cutter, let's say for $50. If I'm only burning out the top quarter inch on this and I scrap the tool, this may be $100. Um, there's a very big price difference in using cutter size, right? You never wanna use a bigger cutter than you need for that reason. Um, one last thing, I always try to use insertable end mills over traditional cutters and end mills. The reason is inserts, this body did cost a good amount of money Inserts themselves are cheap um, comparison to trying to replace this. Look how much carbide is in this cutter. I guarantee there's more carbide in this cutter than there are in these flat five inserts. These inserts, you know, I get two spins out of them. So I get two uses out of each one compared to one use out of this. And I can replace these for less than the cost of this. Um, 
you know, it really comes down to if you're using a tool a lot, sometimes it's worth going and investing in, you know, if it suits for the job, something like an insertable end mill like this, a one inch insertable end mill that I can get a lot of cuts out of rather than buying one inch solid carbide tools, which would be very expensive. Um, I'm always trying to save money because the more money I can save on tooling and inserts, the more money I can potentially make on the job rather than spending all my money in tooling, burning out tooling and having nothing to show for it at the end of the day. Okay. I hope this was helpful guys. That was a real quick crash course intro to cutters. Uh, some very basic rules. If you guys are interested in this, make sure you comment below and let me know if you'd like to see more on this. We can go more in depth. There's a lot more to know about cutters, such as coatings, uh, flute counts, helixes, you know, and so on and so forth, specialty purpose. Uh, so if you're interested, make sure you let us know below and we can get into that later. But uh, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you want to see more videos, make sure you like and subscribe below. You have a great day.